Welcome, everybody. I'm Patrizia Morganti, the USG Communication Officer. And um, welcome to this first event, Catholic Sisters at the COP27. COP is the Conference on Partners, and the theme is the climate change. This is the first event under the umbrella of uh, Catholic Sisters COP27 because USG and other organizations are planning different a series of events during the November months because the COP27 will be held in Egypt, Sharm el Sheikh, and we will start from no uh, November the 6th and it will finish November 18. So today, through this webinar, we will try to understand better what is COP27, how the decision at this level will affect the people where we live and work with, and also the work and the mission of the Catholic sisters in this field. So we have extraordinary speakers, but we will also explain and share with you the resources that we prepare to pray and to learn more about this event. So I, want, I would like just to start. And we start with a very short prayer. We will explain more on this prayer later on. Teresa, may I ask you to read this prayer that I will just now share the screen? The title is Remove Your Shoes of Ignorance. You stand on holy crown. So I invite you now to just take a profound breath and let us inspire by this prayer, which invites us to just remove our shoes because we all stand on holy ground. Shoeless on Sinai earth, our common home is crying out to us through famines, floods, and fires. Remove your shoes of ignorance. You stand on holy ground. Earth, our community, is being forced to move away from the spaces that have nurtured our families for centuries. Remove your shoes of apathy. You stand on holy ground. Earth, our common home, is calling us to recognize the true wealth we are squandering in the pursuit of human-made currency. Remove your shoes of greed. You stand on holy ground. Earth, our community, is being crushed in every society and ecosystem by excess or deprivation. Remove your shoes of individualism, you stand on holy ground. Earth, our common home, cannot wait any longer for us to remove our shoes and recognize that we live on holy ground. Thank you very much, Teresa. I really invite all of us just to take some seconds of for listening to the echoes of this wonderful and profound prayer.
So let's start to remove our shoes and entering in this holy ground, listening to our speakers. We will start with, with Sister Sheila Kinsey. We all know her. She's a member of the Franciscan Sisters, Daughters of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. She's involved in action and advocacy on a wide range of issues, including poverty, human rights, migration, peace building, no violence, and integral ecology. See, to ta since 2015, Sister Sheila has served as executive co-secretary, executive co-secretary for the justice and peace and integrity of creation of the commission of the USG and USG. She's also the international coordinator of the USG campaign, So We Hope for the Planet. Sister Sheila was recently appointed by Pope Francis to the board of the dicastery for promoting integral human development. She's also a member of its COVID-19 commission with the task force on integral ecology. Sister Sheila, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Patricia, for that kind introduction. And it's wonderful to be here with all of you as we journey together on our way to COP27. It's called the Africa COP because it wants to focus attention on the climate crisis in Africa, the poverty, the lack of infrastructure, exploitation of resources, damage that's being done to the environment. Really, it's a vulnerable con continent in many ways. So the goal of the COP is to bring together all of our members in our community to make a commitment to see how we've been doing since COP21 when we talked about the importance, the urgency of the climate change. And so we want to hold ourselves to not increasing more than 1.5 degrees Celsius or in Fahrenheit, that's 2.7 degrees. So in light of the environmental, economic, and social impacts that we're witnessing right now, it's never been more important for us to do so. So as a coordinator of the UISG initiative of Sowing Hope for the, uh, the Planet, we want to make connections to really actualize Laudato Si in a way that we can become painfully aware of what's happening to our world and make it a personal experience so that we can together determine what is ours to do and to affirm the efforts that are already being done. So we have a number of webinars, uh, spaces for on our website for downloading resources, updating one another on what's happening. And we have a special place for the Laudato Si Action platform where we post videos and downloadable materials to really actualize the Laudato Si goals. And we've been mapping uh, the advocacy efforts of 270 of our congregations, ongoing work. We've been exploring the issues related in advocacy to climate change, biodiversity, migrants and refugees, and ecological education, and mining, the extractive industries. All of these areas in some way lead to climate change. And so we're there really working with you on that. So webinars have been organized to get this message out. And we also have mapped our constellation, UISD constellations to what's going on in these countries, as well as what's being done, what kind of impact is being done with our sisters? What kind of commitment are we bringing to the table? And we partnered with Sisters Advocating Globally to produce and help us become more skilled in our advocacy efforts. There's been training sessions really about creating systemic change and a way of looking at what difference can we make together. And if anyone is interested on these sessions, please let us know and we can involve you in those sessions as well. So Sowing Hope for the Planet looks at advocacy with the biblical perspective. You know, Jesus said, I'm sending you to the Holy Spirit. That spirit is going to stay with you. It's the spirit of truth. So that's what we hope to be in, the movement of the spirit, 
the spirit of truth. And so as Pope Francis says to us, there is an underlying connection that exists between the environmental crisis and the social crisis that we're ex you know, currently experiencing. And we ask all of us to make a personal and community ecological conversion because we know everything is interconnection. So we're collaborating now in that spirit of COP27. So we're gonna have an area on our website, both in Swing Hope for the Planet and our Justice and Peace and Integrity of Creation a website to really create and organize kind of an ongoing way of keeping you informed about what's happening, what our religious are doing and how we can connect to one another. We'll post the calendar, the weekly prayers, any other information that we think it will be available. So we can continue to follow up together the commitments that we're making. And this information will make available to whoever wants to, to seek it out. We have participated also in the Africa Climate Dialogue in those sessions. And really, they looked at what are some false solutions that are being proposed. Let's look at our food systems, the economy, migration, loss and damage. And so we want to join with them on their publication of a joint statement that they're making. You hear more about that. The joint statement for COP27, which really is about advocating for funding reimbursement for loss and damage that's taking place. So we'll be looking at what BIVOT is doing and uh, in Uanima and the Africa Climate Dialogues to see what they're doing and what kind of progress can be made and what we can do to follow up. So the Sisters for the Environment, now coming in the middle of this COP, November 3rd, it's a, we'll be hosting in, influential leaders and religious involved in NGOs. Uh, this will be this Thursday on the 3rd to discuss how more we can work together on important environmental issues. It's vital that we affirm the progress that's been made and consider what kind of future directions. It's also important that we do not allow this current crisis and the dealing with the COVID pandemic to erode any of the progress that we have already made. And we are going to stick to that moving together. So we wanna follow up then, you know, with this effort, you know, with our newsletters and social media and challenges that we see that we're faced to look at a statement that's coming out of this November 3rd uh, event. It's gonna be on climate and biodiversity two major events that we want to be a part of. And that will be launched. That statement will be launched then on November 3rd. So when the COP is finished in October, uh, in November 18th, we're going to host a reflection on this experience. And it's going to be a momentous time. You know, it will be determining a way forward with all of our stakeholders that we've engaged in and with whom we have journeyed with. Many of you on this uh, webinar as well. So thank you, thank you for being one with us as we move forward in this very important effort. God bless you, thank you. Thank you very much, Sheila. It's unbelievable listening to you, how much the sisters are engaged for the climate change to accompany the ecological, the integral ecology, and to care for our common home. You talk about vulnerability, which is a very, a very dear theme for me, for USG now. We are trying to go more in depth about vulnerability, personal vulnerability, systemic vulnerability, but also the cosmos vulnerability. Right. I just want to underline, Sheila, the huge resources for prayer and learning more on the website of So Me Hope for the Planet. It's a sort of Wikipedia, echo <laughs> Wikipedia. So sure. please visit the website and try to use this time of the COP27, which you built, which will be very broadcast on the TV, perhaps, also to engage your communities. Thank you very much, Sheila. But stay with us because we can have some questions for you later. 
while our second speaker gets ready, who is Tazdin Esop, I would like to invite the uh, participants, if you, you can write in the chat, if you have a comment, some questions, we will have a time to dialogue. I just want to acknowledge the presence of Sister Dusty Farnan, because <laughs> she was not supposed to be with us today because she's involved in another meeting. Thank you, Dusty that you can stay with us shortly. And thank you to uh, design the calendar, which will be presented later on. And I just want to express in the name of the participants, all our love and prayer and thoughts for you, because you will be there in Egypt in the name of many sisters and brothers working yeah. for the common home. So thank you for being here. So happy to present, to introduce our second speaker. I will read something about her. Tasnin Esop, she's currently executive director of the Climate Action Network International. She has completed her, her second term as commissioner in the National Planning Commission in South Africa where she is right now, appointed by the president, where she led work on climate change and just transition. Mm -hmm. Tans Dean is a, an anti-apartheid activist in different capacity from an early age until the democratic election in 1994. During this time, she was a student and youth activist a teacher and a trade unionist. She became a member of the provincial parliament in the Western Cape in 1994, after the first democratic election in South Africa. She held the position of provincial minister on transport, public works and property management from 2001 and 2004, and provincial minister for the environment planning and economic development from 2004 to 2008, when she res resigned for politics. Welcome, Tasneen, and you have the floor. Thank you very much, um, and greetings to all, and thank you for the introduction. I'm deeply humbled by the invitation to join you in this conversation to prepare ourselves for what is going to be a really challenging COP27. And I look forward to meeting with you, your delegation, when we're there in Sharm El Sheikh. Now, I participated in your launch of the African Dialogues Communique. And as I said, uh, there are huge areas of alignment between the work that you're doing and the work that we do as the Climate Action Network International. Right. Right. There's alignment in terms of our recognition that we are living through the most, cha most challenging times in the history of humanity and the history of our common earth and our common home. We, as has been mentioned by Sister Kinsey, we living through a period where multiple crises are connected and causing immense, immense devastation in the lives of millions and millions of ordinary people, mainly people who are living in vulnerable conditions, who are living through poverty, experiencing inequality and other forms of marginalization. If we look at these multiple crises and who is carrying the burden of these crises, we will recognize and acknowledge that it's the same sections of our society that feel the burden of all these different crises and are unable mostly to build the resilience against these crises and are unable in many instances to recover from these crises. 
When we head to Sharm El Sheikh, one of the biggest issues that our network, and I know through the African Climate uh, Communique, Dialogues Communique, it is your priority as well. We are going to make the issue of finance to address losses and damage caused by climate impacts, the most important test for the success of this COP. And we started this struggle to get funding for loss and damage in COP26 already. We decided we are going to make it the litmus test for COP26. We were not successful, but what we were successful at was to bring this issue back onto the political agenda and in the minds and hearts of people across the world. This year, unfortunately, we have witnessed and are witnessing and experiencing frequent and devastating climate impacts across the world. Whether it's the floods in Pakistan, the floods in Nigeria, whether it's the hurricanes in Florida, whether it's the heat waves that hit all across uh, different continents and the devastating drought that is causing uh, over 200 million people being on the brink of famine in the Horn of Africa, these are all related to climate change. And the science has proven that. But what we don't have is a response by governments across the world to these tragic circumstances. We don't have any funding to address these impacts at all in the multilateral space. And so this is going to be a big issue. It is a big issue for the African continent and other developing countries across the world. The second issue that we are going to, of course, push for, which is another priority for uh, the African continent, is the issue of funding for adaptation. Commitments were made, they remain unfulfilled. So we are going to ensure that we secure the delivery of commitments made. And so I won't go into all of the areas that we have prioritized. It's very aligned to the priorities that come out of the African Climate Dialogues. And I do see ourselves hopefully working together in the spaces that we have defined for ourselves at the COP. So as CAN, we have many activities that we have on a daily basis. One of the things that we convene is uh, what we call CAN Daily, and I would like to extend an invitation to your delegation who will be at the COP to join us. This happens at 2 p.m. every day where we have the briefings of what's happening in the negotiations, also ideas for what we need to do next. So that's one invitation I would like to extend to you. The second um, is, of course, we're planning every day. There will be some action taking place in the blue zone. We are doing this in the blue zone because, as you would be aware, the actions of civil society is very restricted and will be very restricted in Egypt. So we have chosen to do the actions inside the safety of a UN venue and we will have our voices heard there. And again, invite you and your delegation to join us in those actions. We'll have actions demanding the things that we need to see come out of the COP. And we have a daily newsletter, it's called ECO. And this newsletter is highly sought after, interestingly, by negotiators themselves. They look forward to getting our views and perspectives of what they are doing in the negotiations. And so this is a space that we also share with others and allies. And if there's anything that you would like to do and contribute to the writings in that eco, I would again invite you to reach out and we can certainly make space in our daily newspaper, our newsletter to do that. So we do have all these activities. We are very visible in the COP space as can. We've been in these processes for too many years to remember, but we together with allies like you will stay on to fight the important good fight in the interest of our common home and for 
the justice that so many millions of vulnerable peoples across the world require of us right now. So thank you very much for the work that you do. Thank you very much for the commitment that you've displayed. And we look forward to joining hands with you in Sharm El Sheikh at COP27. Thank you very much, Tasneem. I know that you have to leave for another commitment. Thank you for calling us to be together to network because we cannot change the reality if we, if we are not together. I just want to spread the invitation also to you because we won't come to Egypt, but we will try to do our best to make your voice visible. So if you are able, the sisters who are here, who will be in Egypt, please, you can, um, you can share with us news and we can be like, we can echo throughout the world, the sisters and brothers can, and they can pray for you and accompany all of you. Thank you also for underlining the fact that the burden of the climate change is always heavy, most heavy for the most invisible. The people who don't know a lot about them. So thank you very much for underlining that. So we continue to listen to our speakers. And now we, we make a short break in the sense uh, that we I will give the floor to Teresa Blumenstein, and she will introduce the first resource, which is very important, which will be available in three languages, and also the calendar of the different initiatives will go, that will go under the umbrella of the Catholic Sisters at the COP27. May just introduce you shortly, Teresa. Teresa has been working in the community of Catholic religious NGOs at the United Nations since 2015. She served first as an assistant UN representative of the Loreto community. Then she joined the team of Unanima International. We have other representatives here, a coalition of many congregations of sisters. While in both of those roles, she supported a planning effort among many NGO representatives that resulted in the launch of the Justice Coalition of Religious, j which represents the coalition of a 21st NGO of Catholic religious congregations at the UN. Your bio is very long, Teresa. I won't read it now because we know already that you are a special person. So you have the flow and help us to enter more in the frame of the COP27 with all the information that you prepare. Thank you. Thanks so much, Patricia. And yes, you covered the, the most relevant points uh, for this gathering. Uh, which is to say that I have the great privilege to be working among many of the Catholic sisters, as well as brothers and priests and their partners in mission at United Nations headquarters uh, in New York. And as part of that work, um, the, the group that is the Justice Coalition of Religious uh, works to help facilitate collaboration among these many uh, charismatic families, these very many congregations of religious, and also to, to reach out uh, into our global community and to bring the wisdom that comes from the beautiful ministries of religious, bring that global wisdom into the UN conversation. Uh, and so one of the ways that we try to invite that wisdom in is by uh, providing resources that uh, guide our global community 
in following the UN proceedings, uh, even when they cannot be in New York. And since so many things are happening online these days, uh, that has become more accessible than ever. So what I'd like to share with you today or this evening is uh, a guide that has been created uh, by our excellent communications specialist, Katie Garrison of the JCOR team who uh, has put together this guide you or any member of your community through how to access uh, the proceeding 27 from wherever you may be in the world. Teresa, we are not yet able to see your presentation. So perhaps stop sharing and start again. She disappeared. We make a lot of tests before starting and everything was okay. But this is the way it goes. So here we go. Thank you, Teresa. Just unmute yourself. Great. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> so I hope uh, the last part of my sentence came through, which is uh, to say that this is a guide for anyone who would like to follow the proceedings of COP27 from a distant corner of the world, um, far from perhaps Sharm El Sheikh. And this is uh, something that we put together for many UN guides. So if you find it interesting, um, I'll encourage you to look for more in the future on the JCOR website. But uh, just to give you an overview now, and you can explore all of the wonderful details on your own later, uh, essentially what we're offering in this guide is first of all, uh, an introduction to what COP27 is. So for those, uh, maybe your members of community or friends, partners of yours who are not so well-versed in the proceedings of the UN or the climate change conversation, um, this is kind of meant to be a resource that can kind of take you from point zero um, to knowing what's happening and why and inviting you to be a part of it. So we start with what it is. We offer some key terminology uh, that will be useful to following really any UN proceedings related to climate or the environment. We offer what some of the key objectives and objective areas of COP27 are. And we heard about some of these already from both Sister Sheila and Tasneem. And of course, there are the logistical details uh, of when it is happening, the 6th to 18th of November. We have links to the official program uh, and, of course, the links to follow the events via the online portal UN Web TV. And there's also, of course, the official website of COP. And we've also highlighted here that there will actually be thematic uh, days throughout this long conference. So uh, if you find you have a particular interest within this very wide scoping conversation that is climate or environment, uh, you can find the, the different themes are listed here on the right. And there's a bit of background information about each one. So if you find one you love, you might be drawn to that. Or if you see something you've never heard of before, that might also be a, a good link to follow. And because there are many, many events to choose from in any UN conference, uh, we also usually offer uh, a few recommendations of events that might be especially relevant or valuable for members of our community of Catholic sisters, brothers, priests, and their partners. Uh, and so to that end, you'll see here, um, we have, we're inviting everyone to the event we're all in right now. That was point one. So congratulations to you all. You you're already have a perfect score. 
And proceeding from there, um, there are a few other kind of preliminary events leading up to the official program. So um, a, an event on clean energy happening just tomorrow. And then, of course, um, you'll hear more, I'm sure, about UISG's uh, report launch on the great work of sisters in environmental ministries coming up on November 3rd. These are all great events to be part of as we prepare for the official program. And then on the very first uh, afternoon or evening of the official program, there's going to be what I'm sure will be a really lovely uh, interfaith spiritual event that's happening both in person there in Sharm El Sheikh and also online. Uh, so there's details there for how and when you can participate in that. And we'll also, as this kind of community, this partnership gathered here, uh, we'll be offering our own prayer vigil as well uh, the following day on the 7th. So we'll happily uh, invite you all to reconvene with us then uh, to join in what we hope will be uh, a powerful hour of prayer in solidarity with our delegates who are there in Egypt and to really recognize the, the spiritual weight uh, of the place where this conference is taking place and its significance to us. And of course, uh, our, our spiritual connection to the earth and our call to protect it. And I also want to mention that there will be an event happening in person, um, which I think more will be said about after me, so won't go into too much detail, but to say for those in Egypt, there will be an event highlighting the Catholic presence at COP27 on the 17th of November. Um, so anyone who will be in Egypt, I'm sure you will not want to miss that. Um, and if there are, are more events that come to our attention, which typically happens in the final days leading up to a conference, uh, we will continue updating this list. So we always have a link here uh, to our website, which always has the latest version of our guide. And then uh, the next section of the guide is a way that you can engage in advocacy from afar. It's not all about listening and learning, though that's a great and important part. Uh, so particularly through social media uh, is a great way to add your voice to a conversation happening many kilometers or miles away. Uh, and so here we offer a little bit of assistance to get you started, especially if you're um, not a native to social media, if you don't feel extremely comfortable with it, um, this can make it pretty painless, even if you're just creating your first account now on a social media uh, channel. So what we offer here uh, is first of all, some really helpful accounts that you might wanna follow on Twitter or Facebook mm -hmm. during uh, the COP27 conference. These accounts will surely be tweeting and posting helpful messages that you might want to keep an eye on and receive throughout the conference. Then we've also collected uh, several hashtags, which will help kind of bundle your messages together with other people who are having this online conversation around COP27. And of course, we've highlighted our own uh, hashtag for this community is sisters number four, our common home, um, and have alternate versions of that in other languages as well, uh, though without the number four, because that pun is lost <laughs> in translation. And finally, um, we have some sample messages in a number of different subject areas uh, related to climate and this conference. So if you're really new and you're just trying it out, uh, you can literally copy and paste uh, this text and, and post it. Uh, and add your voice to the conversation and see how it goes from there. Uh, try to start interacting with others from there. So we've got posts on a number of different topics. There are a few pages of them here for you to choose from. And this last one uh, pertains to a, a, an ongoing um, 
we could call it a campaign or activity um, that we're inviting you all into during this session today, which uh, we're referring to as digital pilgrimage, um, as we feel we are virtually uh, going together as pilgrims to this conference, to the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, and so this uh, page of the guide in particular is uh, how you can uh, engage online uh, as a way of showing your participation wherever you are in the world uh, by taking a picture of yourself engaging in uh, a daily prayer that we'll offer to you. And we've invited you to engage in that prayer in bare feet um, in this idea of taking your shoes off and stand on, on holy ground. So we invite you to pray with your shoes off and possibly outside if that is accessible for you and to send a uh, post online a photo of your bare feet as you're praying uh, with a message of what it is that you're praying for. Um, what is your petition? What is your call to governments, to corporations, to perhaps your own community or to yourself? Um, put your intentions and your petitions out into the world. And you might do that by saying, uh, praying on this holy ground for, and then fill in the blank uh, with what comes to you in your daily prayer throughout this pilgrimage. And then we also have a number of messages that connect to, of course, a very popular uh, material in our spiritual tradition these days, Laudato Si, and the new film that has come out as a companion to that. So we've got a number of posts for social media that connect with that. And finally, uh, as Patrizia mentioned, I will also be sharing uh, this beautiful resource that is a significant component of our digital pilgrimage, which is this digital calendar, which was produced by the Dominican Leadership Conference. So we'll just take a slightly larger and large look at that. As you can see, uh, it actually starts also before the conference, starting from November 1st. There is a, a resource or a reflection that you are invited to look at each day from the 1st to the 24th of November. And these are all available in English, Spanish, and French. So you can see there are separate links for each day, one for each language. And uh, there's also, if you want to see them all in one continuous document, you can use these links at the bottom. Again, one link for English, one for Spanish, and one for French. And so that uh, is a resource that was prepared by Dominican sisters from around the world uh, who were reflecting in preparation for this important effort toward climate action in our world. So finally, the, the structure, the idea of the digital pilgrimage to bring it all together um, is that we invite you, of course, to engage in these many uh, webinars and events that are being offered, uh, starting with the event that brings us together at this moment. Uh, and of course, the global prayer vigil on the 7th. But for each day of the conference itself, we have provided uh, a daily prayer sequence and a daily action to follow from it. And this is something you can undertake uh, in your own time whenever it's convenient. Uh, there won't be an online gathering point, but um, you might, if you wish to be in the strongest of solidarity, you might choose to try to engage in it at the time that meetings are beginning or ending in Egypt. And we've got a guide there on what time that is wherever you are in the world. And again, you'll be invited to situate yourself for prayer by removing your shoes, possibly going outside if that's accessible, possibly orienting yourself uh, in the direction or the general direction of Sharm El Sheikh, if you can determine where that is from where you are. Uh, you might even choose to, instead of going outside near your own home, maybe you want to go outside a, a nearby government building, uh, a nearby UN office, a nearby corporate entity, uh, wherever you wish to send your prayer energy. 
and and then to engage open the the reflection for the day from the calendar that I just showed on the screen a moment ago. And then following uh, your reading of that reflection you're invited to engage in at least one minute of contemplative silence contemplative prayer and stay there as long as you wish, of course. And then as one uh, way, one common thread uh, uh, that will run throughout our digital pilgrimage, you're invited to conclude with this prayer. Uh, with you'll recognize as uh, the, a version of the prayer we began with today. So you're invited to engage in that. And if you wish, uh, perhaps afterward to repeat a few times the mantra, remove our shoes, we stand on holy ground. Uh, and with this prayer, with this sequence, with this mantra, uh, we will come together in spiritual solidarity with not only our delegates that we send to Egypt, uh, but with the entire process of COP27, with all of the entities who are present there, with all the creatures uh, of goodwill um, who are depending on fruitful conversations there for our survival and our well being. And as I mentioned in the guide, after your prayer, you're also invited to follow on that prayer with an action uh, by sharing that photo uh, of perhaps of your feet or something else from the scene of your prayer and perhaps a word or a message uh, that you're putting out into the world uh, from your prayer. So that's our collection of resources and those are all available on JCOR's website, um, which is if there's not already a link in the chat box, there will be in a moment. Um, and again, the, the guide, that big booklet will be available in English, Spanish and French. And we will also have that uh, kind of short two page uh, program for the digital pilgrimage will be available in English, Spanish, French, Italian and Portuguese. Thanks. Thank you very much, Teresa, for illustrating all the resources, the possibilities that we have, the options to collaborate, even though we do not go to Egypt. <laughs> so I really invite you uh, to, if you use the social media, please use the same hashtag so we can be more effective in the communication and the uh, hashtag is sisters for our common home. So I invite you, Teresa, or another, some other people to write it in the chat, please, so people can use it. We also invite you to download this guide and share, read it, print it, and share it with your communities to become more aware of what is going to happen. And use the, pil the digital pilgrimage to dedicate a time from November the 6th to November the 8th to this event, which really affect the most vulnerable and the poorest in the world. Thank you very much, Teresa. Perhaps at the end of this web webinar, I will call you again back just to remind us some of the next events and the important event is in November the 7th where we'll all meet for an online mm -hmm. prayer a short mm -hmm. prayer to be together and to accompany the sisters and the brothers who will be in Egypt while our next speaker gets ready I just want to inform the speakers the interpreters that I sent them uh, Sister Jean presentation. And I just want to make sure you don't have any question or comments that you can recuperate in the chat. Okay, thank you for your comments. Thank you to Kathy. She already sent the links to the to the guide. 
So before moving to the second session, let's say, of our webinar, I would like to invite you to just have one minute of silence for our interpreters so they can drink and breathe, but also for us just to listen what is coming up in our inner after listening all these inputs, information, idea. We continue our reflection. And I again invite you, if you have questions, clarifications, you can write in the chat, or we, you can also speak live at the end of the second session. I feel very honored and happy to introduce you all, Sister Jean Quinn. She's a member of the International Congregation of Daughters of Wisdom, a nurse by profession, she studied family therapy and addiction studies, as well as social housing studies with the Irish Council for Social, for social Housing. She's also studied theology and philosophy with the Milton Institute in Dublin, where she is now waiting to travel <laughs> to the United States. As well as all the numerous and diverse congregational and professional leadership roles throughout her career, for many years, Sister Jean has been actively involved in international social justice through a range of initiatives. She has spent many years working with the homeless in Dublin and is the founder of Sophia Housing in Ireland. Her vision and leadership have ensured the growth of Sophia, which is now celebrating the 25th year as an organization committed to a holistic approach in supporting people, and particularly women and children, on their journey out of the homelessness. Jean, as we can read on her name, was a member of the Unanima International Board in 2016 and completed an internship that year also. Since joining the Unanima International team as executive director in 2017, Jean's passion for justice, peace, and integrity of creation has continuously been utilized in her international advocacy. Through this role, she serves as chair of the NGO committee, Commi committee for Social Development and has, a, has been a co-chair of the working group to end homelessness. Thank you, Jean, for being with us. I know that you are about to leave. <laughs> so tell us more about what you're going to do in Egypt through Unanima. Thank you so much, Patricia, and thank you so much for that warm introduction and yes I'm, I keep looking at my phone to see if the United States Embassy here in Dublin have sent back my passport so that I can journey back to New York in the next couple of days but actually as we've been talking we're we are talking about journeying so it's like we're all on some journey of some kind and as I was reflecting on preparing for um, COP27, I was reminded of, a, reminded of another journey at another time. And that was the visit of Mary to Elizabeth in the Gospel of Luke. And what is clear from the story is that it's about relationship 
And this relationship takes place in the context of a journey. The encounter bears witness to the urgency of the journey, because as we remember, Mary went with haste. And we all now feel an urgency as we journey to Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt. We, the Sisters of Unanima International and UISG, have been on a journey together for the past year. We are convinced of the need to coordinate, to collaborate and communicate the distinctive voices of Catholic sisters throughout the world at various UN and international events. We are witness to a world that is in a fragile state, where there are poor, where there are the overlooked, and especially neglected women, children and girls. As a group, we want to see change. We want to raise our voices and demand that things must be different. In a society where women are oppressed and denied their rights, Mary and Elizabeth created a space where they could share their stories, their experiences of God, uh, and their uh -huh. hopes for a better future, and where they dared to prophesy and proclaim their respective visions of liberation. Likewise, at this time in our history, as we journey to COP27, we religious women have found in our faith the hope and strength to struggle for justice, for dignity, and the right to participate in the creation of a better future for all people. This journey is for the people we represent who do not have voices. We are making ourselves available for this journey, showing solidarity with and encouragement to women and girls in different circumstances, especially those furthest left behind in our world. Part of the journey UISG and UI took in the past few months was at the high level political forum at the United Nations in New York this past July. The COVID-19 pandemic had deepened and exacerbated multidimensional inequalities and vulnerabilities, including those that are long standard, standard and gender uh, effective. These injustices are further exasperated by the effects of climate change on life below water and life on land. Recognizing this, Unanima International, in collaboration with UISG, sought to highlight this at our side event and make the critical connection between people, planet and prosperity, and how sisters and grassroots leaders improve livelihoods for all. The event offered us a chance to recognize and address how the development and degradation of the planet impacts the environment, the economies and societies in which all people exist. It also gave us the opportunity to cultivate with one another and to inspire a culture of encounter in future generations of change makers. And here we are now preparing for our next encounter at the 27th annual United Nations Climate uh, Summit in Egypt in November. These COP conferences or the conferences of parties as they are known have taken place yearly since 1995, with the exception of 2020, which was obviously postponed due to COVID. Over the years, COP has traveled far and wide from Berlin to Buenos Aires, Kyoto, Cancun, Bali, Marrakesh, and Paris. The aim of these annual events is the finessing of new agreements to see off the spectre of climate change. The most recent COP event took place last year in Glasgow with tens of thousands of participants attending, including world leaders, member states, and civil society. But of course, many of us complain that it's mostly about talking shop. And in the great words of Greta Thunberg, it's about blah, 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 and not enough action. And yet, as we often say about the United Nations, for all its weaknesses and flaws, the UN, like these summits, do matter. And so we, we ask, why do they matter? 
Well, the United Nations climate process has moved the needle when it comes to our response to climate change. When the UN Climate Treaty was first signed in 1992, it triggered a wave of national laws, policies and regulations that have rippled out across every country on earth. This process has started to shift every aspect of our modern economic system, especially the step away from 200 years of reliance on fossil fuels. And then as many people say, why go to COP? While well, some argue that a few hundred diplomats could manage the haggling over the UN official documents under negotiation. But it's also worth noting the impact the other participants can have, especially religious. Like our work at the UN in New York, many new pledges and promises emerge at the sidelines of official negotiations. They're called, often called the coalitions of the willing. Wish, which we wish to make progress in specific sectors, such as reducing methane emissions, halting deforestation and green investment. And then I suppose the next question is, what needs to happen at COP27? Many are describing it as the implementation COP, where we will hopefully begin to turn pledges and well-laid plans into action. There will be pressure for countries to come with bolder measures to renew, reduce their uh, national emissions and for wealthier nations to bring more money to the table when it comes to supporting the developing world. More support for adaptation as well as financial help dealing with loss and damage already wrought by climate change will need to be addressed urgently. It's interesting to note that the strapline for COP27 is together for implementation. Well, implementation needs to happen on time and on scale. It needs to be specific, measurable and impactful. The key is financial assistance for developing countries. If their debt burden is not dealt with, these developing nations are left unable to invest in climate change mitigation or adaptation. Not only has 100 billion a year from richer nations failed to materialize in full, but it has also become clear that the most vulnerable countries are receiving little of what is available. Meanwhile, developing nations continue to go further into debt as they are forced to spend vast sums of money on dealing with the impact of climate change further hampering investment in emission reduction and adaptation. One of the targets for the presidency of COP27 states that delivering climate finance to developing countries needs a new mindset and an updated, updated strategies and policies, especially in light of current financial crises, debt challenge and, interest, and increasing int interest rates. Unlike previous COPs, this one is not aiming for a single negotiated outcome, but for action at the national level. Many long-term veterans of COPs are saying, this is no longer just a function of what the global community agrees. Rather, it's how the global community can work together to advance national interests and national agendas. And where does this leave us as religious communities? Well, religious communities and religious leaders have a significant role to play in addressing climate change and climate justice, which requires deep transformation within our communities and our societies. We already know what changes are needed to diminish long-term harm to our planet. However, like Greta Thunberg and other young activists keep saying, change in action demands change in attitude and a change of heart. So our call together at this gathering is that we inspire our communities to be change agents for climate change and sources for inspiring and motivating politicians and policymakers. Enrolling as um, Sheila said in the Laudata Sea Action Platform, 
making lifestyle changes to reduce our environmental and carbon footprint, and learning about other ways we can inf influence the world around us regarding climate change. And I'm ending as I began with the visitation experience and our unique journey to COP27. Like Mary and Elizabeth, we journey first as listeners to hear sacred stories and to be prophetic in our speech and courageous in our actions at this global gathering. This sacred journey we are embarking upon on your behalf and on behalf of the furthest left behind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Jean. It was very touching to recall these two women. Here, there are women and men, but actually we really can be on journey, even though we won't be there, but it's a journey to become, as you said, agents of transformation. Thank you, thank you very much. I just want to take advantage that Sister Dusty is still here. We have a recorded video for her, but if she's willing to speak, you are most welcome, Sister Dusty. Instead of using the digital <laughs> virtual, welcome. <laughs> Thanks so, thank, thank, thank you so much, Patricia, and all of you who are attending. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a long speech. Um, Could you please but, also introduce yourself, because I was not ready for that. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I am Dusty Farnan, uh, otherwise also known as Durstein Farnan. I'm a Dominican, originally from Adrian, Michigan, but presently I am the UN representative for Dominicans in New York. Mm -hmm. And like many of you, uh, we became alarmed and attentive to the upcoming Conference of Parties, also known as COP27. But what does that mean and how does it impact us? <clears throat> Our common home, Earth, is suffering extreme damage and loss. And in some ways, you and I are responsible, along with our governments, for this damage. The focus of the conference is clearly about climate change, and the goal is to limit the global temperature at 1.5 Celsius. In April of this year, <clears throat> several of us Dominicans from around the world began to plan for COP27. So we invited sisters and associates to capture their efforts to mitigate climate change by making a video. There are over 10 videos presented on this November calendar that uh, Teresa uh, showed you earlier. And we also invited brothers and sisters to share a short reflection on each day during COP. And we have attempted to translate all but three with professional translators. And I've, unfortunately, I had to use uh, an electronic translator for November 9th, 10th, and 17th. We invite you to use this calendar in any way you would like. Just click on each link each day and you will find a translation into French, Spanish, and English. And the videos, unfortunately, are only in English, but I think you'll get the gist as well. Uh, something that I became aware of this past weekend that I did not know I knew that November 13th was so quote unquote a free day, but it's not a free day. November 13th, the conference will take uh, a day to go to Mount Sinai. How significant it is for us to meet at the foot of this holy place where the monks of St. Catherine's Monastery have continuously prayed for the past 17 centuries. And they've done it uninterrupted, quite miraculous. And of course, as you know, they're surrounded by an incredible Be Bedouin community that helps protect the monastery and Mount Sinai. You and I just experienced as church the season of creation, and the symbol of the burning bush was used. 
Again, we find ourselves at this holy ground as we focus on our common home earth and the gift of the God of cre that God of creation has given to us. Please join us in this pilgrimage to Mount Sinai, an ancient sacred ground whose memory and meaning loom large as a place of revelation in the collective consciousness of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and others. We will pray for our common home and our governments to take the responsibility to make a firm commitment to mitigate climate change and care for God's creation. When I learned the link to this incredible afternoon that we will experience, I will send it to the UISG. At this moment, I don't have it. But welcome and let us all together pray for the success and as Sister Jean said, for the prophetic uh, success of this event. It's not just um, words, but it's action. And so together we join in this incredible opportunity that we as re religious have to share our voice and to share our prayer for the hope of our common home. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much, Dusty. Thank you for preparing this wonderful calendar which accompany us, which will allow us, allow us to journey and to make a sort of pilgrimage on this Mount Sinai, which is very symbolic for all of us. And thank you for reminding us that it's not just a Catholic issue. As Pope Francis is teaching us, this is a human issue. And listening to all of you, I become more aware that each of us, each of us can play a role in this COP27, even though we are here. So thank you very much to all our speakers. There are a lot of Thanks message for all of you in the chat box that you can read. We can just stop one minute and see if there are questions from the participants. Otherwise, I would like to invite our four speakers, Sister Dusty, Sister Jean, Sister Sheila and Teresa, just to share with us one or two hopes to avoid the blah, blah, blah. What if we can send the message? What would we ask? What do we expect as an outcome from this COP27? It means that it's the 27th meeting on this issue. Okay, so let's just stop for one minute. Sister Matty, you have the flow. I come from India. Can you hear me, please? Yes, yes very well. Very good. So I am very happy to be part of this journey. I'm willing to walk on this sacred land without shoes. And I'm very happy to listen to all of you. It was really inspiring the efforts taken, undertaken by the different groups and COP27. And I just would like to know, actually, I am here in a center where there are 30 sisters who are preparing for final commitment. They are perpetually, they are going to commit themselves and they belong to 12 congregations. And I'm forming them, I'm in charge of them. Now, in what way can I help these young people who are in their uh, mid-20s 
to help them join this journey of uh, protecting our common home some concrete um, suggestions can you give me or you can share with us so that it will be of some help for us to do something concretely back home thank you so much thank you sister matty i just want to acknowledge the presence of other members of this coalition together with USG and other congregations who sister patricia uh, simmons sister elise garcia and sister dusty everybody knows it so it just to acknowledge the presence of, that, of other member and julia my colleague in the usg advocacy who will present us the for the coming event on the november the 3rd in a few minutes so i would like now to i don't know if there are other questions or clarifications before giving the floor to our speakers Okay, so I will invite the four speakers to take uh, one or two minutes to briefly comment what Sister Matti said, but also to share with us so we can close with more hope, one or two hopes, just to overcome the blah, blah. Sister Sheila, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much. I love the question because we want to engage others in this whole process. And so energy and enthusiasm coming from you, Meti, will help bring that forward with your young people because they will remember how you presented it, maybe sometimes even more than what you said. So please keep that enthusiasm. Uh, please follow up on the suggestions that were given. They're going to be put in the different websites. So go there, show the information, even taking the prayers and, and the work that's being done by our Dominicans. Also, Sewing Hope for the Planet has many uh, opportunities as well, Anima and uh, also CORE, because we work together. So please look at that. Take seriously, because they're religious in the name mm -hmm. of the church. So the La Dato Si Action Platform is sponsored by the Dicastery with the blessing of Pope Francis to really actualize the Laudato Si. So taking that, and there are different tools to use with your young people. And when we've had webinars, we've seen groups gathered for that uh, event. So please encourage your young people with you and later. And my hope is the fact that we're gathering together like this. I mean, we're, you're gonna be in the blue room, the blue zone, but we are networking, creating a reality amongst ourselves that say we can do this. And we're doing it together and we're bringing hope because we believe we can create a vision of a future with our young people as well. So that's a hope that I have. The more we're here, the stick by stick, we're creating a bundle. We're making this little spider web, taking care of that old lion. I mean, we're doing this, what matters and we feel it's in the movement of the spirit and what we're called as religious to do. So that's my hope. That's my hope and my encouragement to you with your young people to move us forward. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Teresa, you have the floor. Thanks. Uh, I'll begin with the question of avoiding blah, blah. Um, the, the idea that came to my mind immediately uh, was a phrase that I heard first uh, as a volunteer with the, the volunteer program of the Sisters of Loretto, the Loretto community, um, which was kind of a, a mantra or guideline for them in their own uh, discernment processes. And so with that in mind, my hope for COP27 is that governments, that private sector leaders, that all participants in every way show up um, not only ready to speak as everyone seeks to do, um, but really to listen and to be modified, um, to be malleable, to be open. That is what allows us all to grow in every sense. Um, and what has allowed our beautiful creation to evolve as it has. 
uh, to unfold and flourish. Uh, and we need to follow that model ourselves um, in proceedings like this. And uh, for Sister Meti, I would say um, taking every opportunity um, with your, your young sisters to pray outside, um, possibly using uh, the, some tiny component of the natural world around you as your scripture uh, every so often in place of our usual text um, and recognizing that as a, a divine revelation unto itself. Um, that is such a, a foundational uh, relationship that I think instills the kind of passion that we need to endure in, in really slow work such as this is. Thank you very much. Jean? Um, I think what I've been praying for these days um, was that I go with the, um, as a sacred listener, because it, it occurs to me, we do so much uh, in so many multi-dimensional ways at the UN. We're running from one meeting to another meeting to another. So it's almost that, almost needing to block out everything and go as a sacred listener to hear sacred stories and maybe stories I mightn't like to hear. But I do believe in that um, everybody sitting around the table in conversation is important. And also um, to be prophetic in, in my speech, hopefully, and but more especially to be courageous in our actions, because I think that is the call of this COP. Um, and we know from our experience at the UN, both in New York and Geneva, that we can we have voices at the side that are very important and uh, we will be in the blue tent, which hopefully will be a sacred place um, to be. Um, and I want to say to Metty, uh, we will bring those young women with us as well. I think that's really important because I feel we're re representing all of you here today. So I don't feel we're going on our own. So um, and and as I'm a daughter of wisdom, to take wisdom's best things with us as, as we take this journey. Thank you very much, Jean. And um... You can really count on our prayer and thoughts during your stay there. Dusty. Well, thank you for this opportunity to share a couple of hopes. I think one is I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping uh, that through our prayer and our concerted efforts as a community of religious worldwide, um, that, that we will pray that governments will fulfill their $100, $100 billion <laughs> promise that they made several years ago in order so that um, our, our home will be safe. And I think the other thing I want to say is that, um, that we have more enlightenment about what it means to be a COP27 in Egypt at uh, Mount Sinai. What does it mean for us as a tradition to rely on this monastery, but to rely on this revelation that we pray together during um, the season of creation and that again we're gathering? I mean, it's no coincidence, it's no accident that these two events uh, of, of the season of creation and now COP27 are coming together. So is this an opportunity for us to really deepen that experience that we had together from September to October. And now um, may, may um, the promise of a, our common home for all be fulfilled and may it be really an opportunity for us to experience more deeply our faith in the belief that God is always with us, even in a burning bush. At, it, that we are experiencing in our common home right now. So may it be true that no bush will burn and that we will move forward as a larger world community, praying for and living into a new opportunity for our earth and for all of us. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dusty, for your 
compassion, your inviting. Before we close this webinar, I would like, as Jean was saying, they are not going, they are just for themselves. They are going for all of us and mostly for the most invisible people who suffered, suffer the burden of this climate change. In Rome, during these days, we are experiencing an eternal summer, which is not good, actually. We enjoy it, but it's not good. So I would like to ask Sister Sheila, just to share a spontaneous prayer, a sort of sending for these sisters who are going to, who are present now, but who are going to Egypt. Sisters mm -hmm. and brothers and lay people who dream a different planet. Well, we hold you in our hearts. We hold the memory of our time together in sharing what matters most to us. And as we carry you deeply within us, we know that somehow or other we're connected. We connect with each other with the cell phone. And it's about our way of being together. The moments that we say, I am praying, somehow or other, the cosmic reality, the spirit, the God is here. So let us remember that this is the God who created this universe, who loves each of us deeply, and who wants us to be instruments of peace, of working together to make this world a better place. It's not our idea. I think it's God's idea that planted it into our very hearts and our being and working together. As they say, holiness is not just about one person. The new sanctification is how we can be as a group together moving forward in holiness. So let us expect the best of one another. Let us be up for the moment when we meet one another, you know, in our own journey. And please know, please know those of you who are traveling, who are being there, taking off your shoes and because that ground is holy. I know you're taking us with you because of this experience. So please, please know that the God that unites each of us is consciously bringing and drawing us together to make this world a better place because we're here and we're the people for this time. Thank you. Thank you for journeying to the UN. Thank you for being with us here. And really thank you for the work that we got to do once this is done. Thank you so much. God bless. Amen. Thank you very much, Sheila. I, want, I don't want to add any other words. I just want to, before closing this beautiful webinar, I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Julia. She will invite us to another meeting on environment. Julia. Thank you, Patricia. And thank you so much to everyone who's joined us today. Um, it's been such a beautiful time and it's actually difficult to follow such um, moving reflections with anything worthy of a of a finish um, but I do just want to ride this wave of inspiration really um, all the way to our next event which is on November 3rd um, so I just wanted to highlight <clears throat> that on November 3rd UISG will be launching a statement entitled Sisters for the Environment Integrating Voices from the Margins um, and it's a really special moment for us because the launch of the statement is the culmination and the fruit um, of, well, 
a year's work, certainly. I mean, really, it's the fruit of partnerships that have been building up long before that. Um, but concretely, it's the product of the work that we've been doing this year in collaboration, um, in this spirit of networking, of joining together. Um, so um, my office, the Advocacy Project at USG, has been working with Sister Sheila's office, um, with Sewing Hope for the Planet, with Sister Jean at Unanima, um, with many, many other wonderful partners and supporters to produce something um, that for us is really a statement um, with a kind of dual function. On the one hand, it's a statement that wants to capture, wants to grasp this moment of urgency, this moment of potential for change um, around COP27 on climate and later also COP15 on biodiversity in December. But at the same time, it's a statement that really wants to share a deep rooted vision that has inspired sisters for many decades in their environmental work and continues to do so regardless of what's in the news or you know what's happening um, kind of out there in the world it's also trying to express a really really profound vision um, that's ecological that's spiritual that's social um, and it's about how we bring vulnerability to the center of global dialogue for change. So all of that um, is really just an invitation for you to join us on November 3rd. The launch will take place at 4 p.m. Rome time. Um, so that's round about now on Thursday next week. Um, all of the links will soon be available via all of the UISG channels. So on the website, via social media, by the newsletter, hopefully if Patrick is kind enough. Um, so very soon you'll be receiving all the information to join us online on the day and we do hope that you will be with us in spirit in prayer and hopefully in presence thank you thank you very much julia and thank you to all of you the speakers the participants and our translators the technical side so how many people behind the meeting so thank you very much. I just want to name our interpreters, Pascal, Silvia, Marilou, and Ricardo, who helps us from the background. So thank you to all very much. And we hope to continue to journey together for a better common home. Now we go.